I am very excited to bring you the following video on medians and maximums for quite a few reasons. Number one, this original video was made about four years ago. So you might be able to tell my voice sounds a little bit younger. It was made for the GMA, but it's also perfect for the GRE. And I see it come up more and more these days as the test gets harder. I would call it a 165 level topic or a 700 level topic for the GMAT. And it's to do with greatest possible value, least possible value, medians and maximums. Now it's a fairly tricky topic, but do let me know in the comments if I explained it well back in 2018 or 19, I think it was. And if you do, I will release more videos that I made back then before I even started this YouTube channel. Here is a crazy fun trick that I love to explain. The question looks impossible, looks intimidating, but it's actually quite simple if you follow a set way of doing the question, which I'm about to show you. Have a go at the question yourself by pausing the video or wait a moment to see my trick. Here's the trick and here is the question. In a set of seven distinct positive integers, the largest integer is four less than, twice as large as the smallest integer. If the median of the integers is 20, and the mean of the integers is 19, what is the greatest possible value of the second largest integer? Wow, that is a mouthful of algebra and terms there to take in. How on earth are we going to deal with this kind of question? The best way to deal with it is to take things step by step and ideally to visualize what's going on. Otherwise, we can easily get lost. So as I've drawn down here, we can have seven slots for the seven possibilities for the numbers in this question. They said there were seven distinct positive integers. Those three words are very important. You should be very alert when those words come up. Distinct, so that each number is different from another number. Positive, that's brilliant, so no zeros or negative numbers. And integers, no decimals, very important. Okay, what about the next set of words? <laughs> the largest integer is four less than twice as large as the smallest integer. Wow, that is confusing. We don't even know the smallest integer. What we're gonna do here, to help our brains capture what's going on, we're going to pick the smaller of the two terms described here and give it a letter. Now clearly, the smallest of the two terms is gonna be the smallest integer in this list. It's in order. So let's call that smallest integer, let's call it x. The reason we do that is it, it just helps us for the rest of the question actually grasp what's going on. Rather than have all these different concepts in our head and try and pick numbers, which would be very difficult here with all the different conditions attached, we're just going to call it a simple name. We're going to call it x for the smallest one. That should make the largest one a bit easier to understand. The largest integer is 4 less than, okay, confusing, twice as large as the smallest integer. Well, the end of that sentence I can understand. Twice as large as the smallest integer. Well, that's twice as large as x, so that'll be 2x. But it says four less than twice as large. So that'll be 2x minus four. It's almost like reading the sentence from the back helps us to understand it. Twice as large as the smallest means 2x, and four less than that means 2x minus four. So that's the smallest integer and the largest integer sorted out. Now let's carry on. If the median of the integers is 20, okay, let's stop there. What does median mean? Median means the middle number. If there are seven numbers, which one is the median? That will be this guy in the middle. He is the number 20. Let's carry on. And the mean of the integers is 19. Well, we can't just write that down because there's, it's not saying any one of the numbers is 19. It's saying the mean is 19. What's your first instinct when you see that the mean is 19? Hopefully your first instinct is to say, let's do 19 times the number of numbers to find the total. In this case, that would be 19 times seven because there are seven integers here. That will tell us the total or the sum of all of the integers. 19 times seven, I believe would be 133. You can just do seven times 20 and then take away seven. So we know the integers add up to 133 which could be helpful, probably will be helpful given that they've told us this. Then it carries on. What is the greatest possible value 
of the second largest integer, which is this guy. Now things were going so well up to that moment, but now they've made it even harder. They're now asking for the greatest possible value of this second largest integer. The thing I want you to bear in mind, any time the question says greatest possible value of a particular integer, that probably means, or almost certainly means, that all the other integers in the question must be minimized. If we minimize all these other integers here, that will leave the most amount of room within that given total for the second largest integer. So our job, when the question says, make the second largest integer as big as possible, make it great again, so to speak, we're going to minimize all the other integers. How do we do that? Well, what's the smallest that integer number two could be? Well, we know that the smallest integer in this set is x. So it can't be any smaller than x. Otherwise, this second number would be the smallest. So it has to be greater or equal to x. But then the question used the word distinct, and we can't forget that. So it can't be the same as x. So the smallest it could be is, if you think about it, x plus 1. So we've made sure that it's not less than x. It's not the same as x because it's got to be distinct. So the smallest it can be is just 1 up from x, x plus 1. Same logic for the next number. Can you guess what that would be? It would be x plus 2 because, again, it can't be the same as either of these two numbers and it can't be lower, otherwise then it would be the least integer. And remember, these numbers are in order. Now, be really impressed if you can also try to minimize this fifth number here. What's the smallest value that this fifth number could be? It would actually be 21. The reason is the median is 20. So that goes in the middle here, we've written that earlier. And it can't be less than the median because these numbers are in order, but it can't be the same as the median because again, the numbers are distinct. So we make it 21. So what we've successfully done is minimize all these other numbers. We could have made them anything. If we were trying to maximize them, we could have made it x plus 10, x plus a million. But we tried to minimize them. And the reason we did that is to make sure that this guy has got as much room as possible to be as big as possible. And that's the final tough bit of this question. What's the biggest value that this second largest integer could be? It's quite tough. The biggest value that he or she could be is one less than the largest integer. If the largest integer is 2x minus 4, one less than that is 2x minus 5. If this second largest integer was any bigger, he would become or she would become the largest integer. So we've got to make it just one smaller. We can't make it the same because the numbers are distinct. Now feel free to watch this video again because there's many different steps there and each of them are super useful for the future. Now you can probably guess what we're going to do now. We're going to add up each of these terms because we know that the total equals 133. I've done that down here and you can read my excellent explanation again. And what I've done is add up all of these terms and make them equal to 133. That becomes 7x plus 35 equals 133. And taking away 35 from both sides, 7x is 98. Dividing by 7, x is 14. But we don't pick 14 as the answer because the question is actually what is the value of the second largest integer or the greatest possible value. So if x is 14, the second largest integer is 2 times 14 minus 5, which is 23, which is answer A.